So we will start our next lecture by Professor Kazuya Yamamura. Uh, his lecture title will be Nano Manufacturing Based on Plasma Process. So he is from Department of uh, Precision Science Engineering from Graduate School of Engineering in Osaka University. His research area and expertise uh, is plasma nanomanufacturing process, electrochemical nanomanufacturing process, science of practical semiconductor surface, and micro or nanosystem using a microfabrication. So uh, the lecture from uh, Yamamura Sensei will be 45 minutes. Uh, please uh, enjoy his lecture. To Yamamura Sensei, times mm -hmm. is yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? And uh, can you see the uh, see my slide? Yes, we can see your slide. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Kazuya Yamamura, and I am belonging to uh, Department of uh, Precision Engineering of uh, Osaka University. And uh, uh, today's my lecture topic is nano manufacturing. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, nano manufacturing. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, nano manufacturing. Uh, so, uh, based on a plasma process. Uh, the nano manufacturing process developed in our laboratory is an essential technology for high precision substrates for manufacturing state-of-the-art power devices and electronic devices and so on. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce you the plasma-based uh, nanomanufacturing process. And first of all, I will explain the material removal mechanism in conventional machining. The figure on the left side shows a cutting model of metal material. Uh, generally, metal materials are polycrystalline and their grain size is about 10 micrometers. In the depth of cut is greater than 100 micrometers the material is removed continuously as shown in A. And uh, when the depth of cut is 10 to 100 micrometers, uh, inclusions and voids are uh, involved in the removal of the material as shown in B. And when the depth of cut is one to 10 micrometers, dislocations uh, involved in the removal of the material are shown in, as shown in C. Oh. Oh, can you hear me? Can you enlarge the slide shows? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I will try to. Um, okay. Yes. Can you hear? You. Yes. You see? Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, and if the depth of cut is less than one micrometer, as shown in this uh, D. Uh, the material will be removed almost ideally as, uh, like this. So uh, in the case of conventional machining process, uh, the removal mode is 
quite different depending on the depth of cut. And next, uh, the figure on the right side shows the surface deformed layer are formed after machining. Uh, in the case of machine, the material is removed by plastic deformation. So uh, such a damage layer is inevitably formed on the surface. Uh, such a damaged layer greatly deteriorates the physical and the chemical properties of the material. So the presence of the damaged layer is unacceptable in the case of functional materials such as semiconductors and fine ceramics. And this figure illustrates the turning processes. Uh, the turning processes is a very familiar and practical machining method. In the case of turning process, the material is removed by uh, pressing the cutting tool against the rotated material like this. And at this time, the cutting accuracy is determined by the rotational accuracy of the bearing uh, that supports the rotating material and the rigidness of the base uh, that supports the cutting tool. So this is uh, because the rotational accuracy of the bearing and the rigidness of the base determines the contact position of the cutting tool. In this way, the precision, uh, the precision of the machine determines the precision of machining is called the copying principle. Therefore, uh, machining is a very efficient and practical. However, generation of surface damage and strong dependence on the copying principle are inevitable. And this slide shows the comparison of a conventional machining and plasma process. Uh, in the case of uh, conventional machining, such as cutting, grinding, wrapping, and so on, uh, subsurface damage is inevitably formed because, uh, because of the mechanical removal process based on the hardness difference. And machining accuracy strongly depends on the rigidness of the machine and the tool, depends on the external vibration, and uh, depends on the thermal deformation because position of the tip of the tool is fluctuated by these disturbances. Uh, in contrast, in the case of uh, uh, plasma process, there is no damage because a removal phenomenon is pure chemical. And the problem in the mechanical removal process are completely negligible because a plasma process is a non-contact chemical removal process. And the stability of the plasma is very good and the change in the surface temperature is easily compensated because reproducibility, uh, reproducibility of the thermal behavior is very good. Therefore, a form of accuracy with nanometer order can be easily obtained by applying the plasma process. And by the way, uh, what plasma? Uh, in general, uh, matters have three states, solid, liquid, and gas. And plasma is called the fourth state and is composed of neutral atoms, positively charged ions, and negatively charged electrons. And the overall plasma is electrically neutral. 
uh, on the earth, you know, the aurora and the thunder are in a plasma state, but they are not usual. However, in the universe, 99% of visible matters are in the plasma state. So it can be said that plasma is very familiar in the universe. And the plasma contains ions. And if ion with large kinetic energy impact with the substrate, damage will occur on the surface of the substrate. Uh, this equation is the equation of motion of a charged particle in a high frequency electric field. And uh, this equation is called the uh, Langevin equation, which considers a collision between atoms during the movement. Uh, it can be seen that X represents the amplitude of charged particle in one cycle of a high frequency electric field. And its magnitude is proportional to the uh, electric, electric field strength inversely proportional to the square of the frequency and uh, inversely proportional to the pressure, P. And uh, uh, this table shows the frequency and uh, the pressure dependence of the amplitude of helium and uh, fluorine ions. Uh, from this table, it can be seen that when the pressure to generate plasma is high, the amplitude of ion is very small, like this, because the collision frequency of atom is high. Therefore, in the case of high pressure plasma, the acceleration distance of ion is very small. And as a result, the collision energy of ions on the substrate surface is very small. So do you think there is no damage on the surface etched by high pressure plasma? Uh, this right side graph shows the results of measuring the, the amount of damage on single crystal silicon wafers uh, processed by various methods. And they were measured by uh, surface uh, photovoltaic method, SPV. In the case of uh, sputtering, in which argon ions are accelerated at one kilovolt or a conventional uh, mechanical polishing method, a large number of defects have been observed like this. On the other hand, in the case of high pressure plasma etching, the number of defects is very small and it can be seen that it is equivalent to chemical etching using a chemical uh, solution. Uh, because our plasma is usually generated under high pressure conditions, about 0.1 to one atom. So uh, it can be considered that there is almost no damage generated on the substrate. And I would like to introduce another feature of high pressure plasma. Uh, a conventional plasma processes utilize, uh, utilizes a large spread plasma under low pressure. And its purpose is to manufacture uh, semiconductor devices with, uh, uh, with fine patterns. Uh, in these manufacturing processes, a mask pattern on the surface is required on a silicon wafer to make a fine pattern. On the other hand, 
in the case of our high pressure plasma process, the plasma is localized uh, near the uh, electrode like this. So a uh, mask pattern is not required. Uh, therefore, it is possible to achieve high efficiency and spatial resolution of the process comparable to conventional machining. Uh, we name this process a plasma CVM. And uh, a CVM is uh, an abbreviation of chemical vaporization machining. And the procedure for conventional plasma process is as follows. Uh, first, the sample is set in the equipment and the equi equipment is evacuated and the uh, reaction gas is supplied. And the plasma process is performed and the equipment is evacuated again and the gas is replaced uh, safety, uh, safe or for uh, safety. And finally, a uh, sample is taken out. Therefore, it takes long time because there are many steps. On the other hand, we have developed a plasma process equipment that operates under atmospheric pressure. Uh, in the case of our equipment, uh, because it is not necessary to evacuate the equipment, the plasma process can be performed immediately after the sample uh, is installed on the stage. And the uh, uh, sample can be taken out immediately after the process is completed. So our process is very simple and uh, are uh, not time consuming. And this slide shows the procedure of our figure correction process in PCVM, plasma CVM process. Uh, in this process, uh, firstly, measure the surface profile of the sample to obtain a figure error distribution. And secondly, calculate the scanning speed distribution of the localized plasma by a deconvolution simulation. And thirdly, a numerically controlled figure correction is conducted uh, by control um, according to the simulation result. And finally, uh, objective shape is deterministically obtained with the nanometer order form accuracy. And this figure shows the thickness distribution of quartz crystal wafer, which was made by a conventional manufacturing process. In this case, a maximum difference of the thickness was 122 nanometer. And a standard deviation of thickness distribution was 33.2 nanometer. Uh, Quartz wafer are uh, used to make a crystal units and uh, uh, company require a standard deviation of less than two nanometer for the thickness distribution. So to meet this demand, we corrected the thickness distribution with plasma CVM. And as a result, a uh, maximum value of 15 nanometer and standard deviation of 3.2 nanometer were obtained for the thickness distribution. And the uh, uh, required values are almost achieved. In this case, the total processing time was only one minute and 47 seconds. So, plasma CVM process has an ability for practical use in industry. So we conducted a joint research with a Japanese company 
and uh, succeeded in constructing a process for mass production of the world's smallest size crystal unit, like this. And now, in your smartphone, there are many crystal units manufactured using our technology, plasma CVM. Uh, therefore, the atmospheric pressure plasma process developed by us has nanometer order accuracy and is very practical. And in the case of plasma CVM, a uh, damage-free surface is obtained because of its chemical removal mechanism. However, uh, flattening ability is low compared with the conventional abrasive machining because a surface atom is removed by the isotropic etching. And uh, applicable material is limited, which produces a volatile reaction product. Uh, in the case of abrasive machining, a removal rate and uh, a flattening ability is very high, uh, but uh, subsurface damage is inevitably introduced on the surface uh, due to its removal mechanism, uh, such as uh, plastic deformation and or brittle fracture. Uh, we newly propose a plasma assisted polishing by combining uh, good properties of these plasma and abrasive machining process. In this process, irradiation of plasma and abrasive machining processes. In this process, uh, irradiation of atmospheric pressure plasma modify the hard material surface to soft material, and the motion of abrasive preferentially removes the softened layer. And in this case, most important thing is the hardness of the abrasive. A hardness of the abrasive should be less than that of base material and should be greater than that of modified layer. So uh, adequate surface modification and adequate selection of abrasive material enables us to obtain the scratch-free and damage-free surface in finishing the difficult to machine materials, uh, such as uh, silicon carbide, gallium nitride, and diamond. And these figures show the cross-sectional transmission electron microscope images of the silicon carbide surface. Uh, left, side show, uh, left side image shows the surface before plasma irradiation. Uh, this line shows the uh, interface of carbon protect layer and uh, SIC. And the right side image shows the surface, which was irradiated by the uh, water vapor contained plasma for one hour. Uh, you can see clearly the modified layer uh, with a thickness of about 20 nanometers. And uh, these uh, XPS spectra indicate that a silicon carbide surface was oxidized by plasma irradiation. And we expected of hard materials to be softened by plasma irradiation. Therefore, uh, the hardness of this uh, modified layer was measured by the nano indenter. And as you can see from this measurement result, the hardness of the surface was reduced by about one order magnitude by the irradiation of plasma. So this result means that plasma modification of SIC to SiO2 drastically decreased the hardness as we expected. And this slide shows the roughness change process in plasma-assisted polishing of SIC. 
uh, initial surface was prepared by diamond wrapping. And a lot of scratches are observed like this. And middle image shows the in-process surface uh, processed by plasma-assisted polishing using a seria abrasive. Uh, seria means uh, cerium oxide. Uh, the hardness of seria abrasive is much smaller than that of CSIC. And the surface roughness gradually decreased from the surrounding area of the deep scratches, like this. And the periodical uh, step structures were observed on the polished surface. And finally, all the area was covered with well-ordered step terrace structures. So these results indicate uh, that the removal is occurred from the topmost atom of the surface and the plasma assisted polishing enables us to obtain an atomically smooth surface by chemical mechanical removal process in dry condition. And uh, this slide illustrates a step structure on silicon carbide surface. Uh, if the surface of SIC inclines from the crystal phase, as shown in the upper right figure, uh, periodical step structures with a step height of 0.25 nanometer emerge on the surface like this. Uh, this sample is observed on the surface processed by plasma assisted polishing. So this observation result means that the surface finished by plasma assisted polishing is an atomically smooth and perfect surface. And this slide comparison shows a comparison of diamond wrapping and plasma assisted polishing of silicon carbide substrate. So in the case of diamond abrasive wrapping like this, uh, many deep scratches are formed on the surface and the damaged amorphous layer is observed in a cross-sectional cross TEM image like this. In contrast, in the case of uh, plasma-assisted polishing, there is no scratches on the surface and a defect-free and atomically smooth perfect surface was obtained as shown in cross-sectional TEM image like this. And this figure shows an AFM image of gallium nitride surface. Uh, this surface is just after epitaxially grown. Therefore, the step terrace structure on this surface is very disordered. And uh, uh, many small pits can be observed at the dislocation site. Uh, for example, here, 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 and here. And as shown in the lower right cross-sectional profile, the step height is about 0.5 nanometer, which corresponds to a two by layer step height of gallium nitride. Uh, ideal step height of gallium nitride is 0.26 nanometer. So this observation result means that the step bunching was occurred in the epitaxial growth process. And this slide shows the AFM images of the gun, uh, gallium nitride surface processed by conventional CMP uh, using uh, silica slurry and seria slurry. Uh, CMP is an abbreviation of chemical mechanical polishing and uh, a slurry means a mixture of abrasives and some chemicals. Um, 
after CMP, one by layer uh, stepular structures were formed on the surface, but many enlarged pits can be observed after CMP. And in the case of using uh, silica slurry, SiO2 slurry, size and the number of the pits are large compared to a uh, serious slurry polishing. Uh, of course, these pits greatly deteriorate of the surface integrity and roughness. And uh, these pits originated from the dislocation of uh, gallium nitride because uh, they are generated at the dislocation site. And furthermore, the pit size of the polished surface is much larger than that of a grown surface. So these results show that in the case of CMP process, preferential removal of dislocation sites occurs. And as a result, surface morphology strongly degrades like this. Uh, on the other hand, we applied the plasma-assisted polishing to gallium nitride wafer instead of CMP. Uh, firstly, we investigated the modification ability of uh, CF4 contains uh, plasma using this experimental apparatus. Uh, irradiation of CF4 contained plasma makes a gallium fluoride layer on the surface like this. So uh, we irradiated the CF4 plasma contained, uh, CF4 contained plasma for 30 minutes. And as a result, a thickness of modified layer reached about uh, 30 nanometer. And the hardness of the surface was drastically decreased from 22 gigapascal to 13 gigapascal by a CF4 contained plasma irradiation. Uh, therefore, it is expected that this modified layer uh, will be removed very easily. Uh, since the effect of plasma irradiation on surface softening was confirmed by the measuring uh, the nano indenter test, we applied a two step plasma assisted polishing process to gallium nitride polishing. The first step is surface modification by plasma irradiation. And the uh, uh, second step is dry polishing using seria abrasive. And uh, after three hours of dry polishing uh, following plasma modification, we obtained a very uniform step thrust structure with a step height of 0 0.26 nanometer. It, it, uh, this uh, height is very ideal uh, for the gallium nitride uh, surface. And the uh, uh, most remarkable, remarkable point is that there is no edge pits at the defect of uh, gallium nitride surface. Uh, in contrast, in the case of uh, conventional CMP using a uh, silica slurry, uh, many large uh, pits are generated on the defect sites of gallium nitride surface, like this. Uh, therefore, it can be seen that plasma assisted polishing is a, a great advantage compared to the conventional CMP using slurry. However, why plasma assisted polishing could obtain a pit free perfect surface? Uh, this figure shows a uh, change in roughness of gallium nitride surfaces processed by CMP and plasma assisted polishing. Uh, initial surface 
uh, was as received epitaxial grown garib nitride wafer. And the red uh, symbols uh, show the roughness of the surface uh, polished by CAP using silica slurry. And in this case, uh, roughness is gradually increased like this. In contrast, in the case of plasma assisted polishing, as shown by the blue symbols, uh, roughness of the initial surface monotonically decreased according to the increase in the polishing time, like this. So we propose the probable mechanism to explain these results. So in the case of slurry polishing, as shown in the upper right figure, slurry includes the alkaline chemical agent. And this chemical agent reacts with uh, dislocation site. And as, the, and as a result, many large pits are formed on the surface. In contrast, in the case of plasma assisted polishing as shown in the lower right figure, there is no chemical agent because this process is completely dry process and a modified layer are formed on the surface protect the excessive reaction to the dislocation like this. So uh, plasma assisted polishing has great advantage to conventional CMP process using slurry in the sense of realizing a pit-free defect, a perfect finishing. And next, I will introduce an exa example of applying plasma-assisted polishing to the polishing of diamond substrates. Uh, since ancient times, a diamond is well known as the jewel because of its beauty and high hardness. And humankind also utilizes the diamond in various industrial fields, such as tools for machining and optical window for X-ray because of its high hardness and optical transparency. And these days, a single crystal diamond is considered uh, considered uh, as an ultimate promising material for power device and heat sink because of its wide band gap and high thermal conductivity. Uh, in this lecture, I focus on the finishing of single crystal diamond wafer uh, for power device and heat sink use. Well, why is the diamond is considered as a promising material for power devices? It is because that band gap of the diamond is the largest among as the semiconductor materials as shown in this table. And if the band gap is large, the power device can operate in high temperature. And the conventional power module in electric vehicle has very large cooling system to prevent overheat. On the other hand, application of diamond power device can remove the cooling system from the power module because a diamond power device can operate in high temperature. Therefore, decrease in size and weight of power module can be realized by utilizing diamond power devices. And furthermore, a breakdown field of diamond is very large compared to other semiconductor materials. So the diamond device can decrease the thickness of the uh, drift layer in field effect transistor to control the electric current this drift layer acts as a resistive layer to consume the power consumption, uh, to consume the electric power. So 
thin drift layer can reduce the power consumption. Therefore, application of diode power device can drastically improve the landing performance of electric vehicle from the viewpoint of miniaturization of power module and decrease in power consumption. And recently, a uh, production process of large sized single crystal diamond wafer, so-called SCD wafer, has been developed by IST uh, in Japan. This process consists of two processes. One is a lift off process, and the other one is a bonding process. In the first lift off process, uh, freestanding SCD wafers are replicated by using a combination process consisted of ion implantation and CVD epitaxial growth technique. And then, in the second bonding process, these wafers are united to be a large sized one wafer by CVD growth. Uh, recently, by using these techniques, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, by using these techniques, a 60 millimeter times 40 millimeter size, very large, a single crystal diamond wafer has been realized. And for, however, the surface of this diamond wafer is very rough. Uh, for example, uh, flatness of the wafer is greater than 50 micron. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. And furthermore, a uh, step bunching structure with a height of 350 nanometer exists on the surface. So this SCD wafer needs planarizing and smoothing to use as a power device or a heat sink substrate. Uh, this photograph shows a, a plasma assisted polishing apparatus for polishing of large size diamond wafer. Uh, this is a polishing plate uh, made of uh, quartz grass and the diamond wafer is set uh, this here. And the plasma is uh, generated between upper electrode and lower polishing plate, like this. And uh, this photograph shows the appearance of 20 millimeter square sized uh, diamond wafer. Uh, formerly, we used this half sized 10 millimeter square wafer, but recently we tried to polish this 20 millimeter square size large diamond wafer. Uh, however, uh, this wafer had very large waviness over 100 micrometer like this. Uh, this waviness was formed by CVD growth process. So this waviness should be removed to use as a a uh, heat sink or a power device substrate. And this slide shows the results of plasma assisted polishing of 20 millimeter square size diamond wafer. After polishing, we obtain the flatness of less than 0.5 micron, and the surface roughness was less than 0.5 nanometer root mean square roughness. And in this case, maximum polishing rate was about 10 micron per hour. And the measurement result of Raman spectroscopy showed that there was no damage on the surface. So plasma assisted polishing is a very promising technique for highly efficient polishing of diamond substrate. And uh, these are the targets of nanomanufacturing process based on plasma process. I strongly hope that the nanomanufacturing process developed by us for
for these targets will be put to practical use in near future. And we want to contribute to the development of humankind by our technology. Okay, uh, that's all for my lecture. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention. And uh, uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, please, oh, sorry. Please send to my email address and please visit our laboratory's homepage for your reference. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yamamura Sensei. Okay, now we still have time uh, about five minutes. Uh, we have one question here in the chat box. Mm -hmm from uh, Domenico Mikhail. He's asking, uh, after plasma assisted policing process, is there any soft or modified layer residual on the layer? Uh -huh. If yes. Oh, no, no. Uh, yes. So uh, it's a good question. Uh, modified layer is completely removed by the hmm. uh, removal process, by the uh, by the abrasive polishing process. So, hmm. um, so uh, if the uh, in the case of a uh, uh, comp uh, complete uh, removal of the modified layer, plasma uh, turn off uh, in advance uh, the polishing process. So plasma off and uh, residual. Uh, modified layer completely completely removed after the uh, additional polishing, so there is no modified layer on the surface. So it will not disturb the properties of the material. Mm -hmm. Pardon? It will not disturb the properties of the material itself. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Uh, is there any? More question from participant here. You can uh, write down your uh, question or turn on your microphone. Hello. Maybe uh, I have one question, uh, mm -hmm. Sensei. Yeah. So basically, what is the main difference between this plasma coating with etching process? Mm -hmm. A coating? Yes, this uh, polishing process with uh, etching process. A different difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I introduced uh, two processes today. Uh, mm -hmm. One is uh, directly uh, etch the surface to make a uh, uh, shape like a lens or a mirror. Mm -hmm. And the uh, latter case is a modifi plasma modification, not etching. Uh, oh, modification. And the modification layer uh, removed by the uh, conventional uh, dry polishing process. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, former is uh, making a shape uh, efficiently, and the uh, uh, latter process is a uh, finishing of a roughness of the surface. Okay. So, they, they are two completely different processes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Is there any questions? from a participant here? Or do you have any problem with our voice? Hello? Okay. Oh. No. Okay. I hope uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, please send me. Huh? Is, oh, there is uh, another question, Sensei. Uh -huh. In the chat uh, box. Yes, in the future, what is the other advantage of plasma? 
Yes, uh, I am trying uh, another uh, surface. Uh, for example, the fine ceramics. Uh, fine ceramics is uh, uh, ceramics material is uh, uh, composed by the many many fine grains. And uh, in the case of uh, a conventional polishing process, uh, mechanical uh, pressure and uh, force uh, put out the grain from the surface. So a uh, small pits uh, uh, formed on the surface. But mm -hmm. in our uh, plasma modification process, uh, plasma assisted polishing, uh, surface uh, layer is uh, modified by uh, modified uh, soft. So very small polishing pressure can remove the surface of the grain. So there is no uh, pick up the, uh, um, the grain from the uh, surface. So there is no uh, pit on the surface on the uh, fine ceramics material. Mm. So it's a great advantage for the uh, fine ceramics material. Okay. Hope. Okay. Hope you can uh, uh, receive the answer. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Uh, is there any question from participants here? Oh, there is one more, Sensei. Drug uh, Okay. Uh, so uh, today I uh, introduced the uh, um, removal process uh, uh, for the uh, fine ceramics and wind gap semiconductor. So uh, you. Um, in your, your, in your question, uh, I have read the literature uh, for the uh, drug delivery system for modify the uh, plastic uh, capsule uh, on the surface by plasma irradiation. And uh, uh, plasma modification can, uh, can realize uh, uh, objective position on the uh, human body, uh, but I don't know the detail in the, uh, that process. So, sorry, I, I can't uh, answer uh, very well. Okay. Thank you, uh, Yamamura Sensei. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. There's a more, another question here. Uh -huh. Uh, asking if he wants to know about uh -huh. plasma etching. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Uh, so, hmm. uh, our process is not, uh, our process is not for the uh, fine, uh, to make a fine pattern directly. So our um, process is useful to make this uh, photo mask substrate. Uh, photo mask substrate made of uh, very pure uh, quartz grass. And the uh, uh, flatness of this substrate is uh, about 50 nanometer uh, in, in flatness. So your question is a uh, 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 horizontal uh, uh, space resolution of uh, uh, the pattern. But in our case, uh, not fine pattern. Uh, the global uh, planarization is our uh, work. So, so uh, our objective is quite different for a fine pattern, for not making a fine pattern, but uh, making a global flatness in nanometer order accuracy. Okay. Okay. I hope you find the, your answer uh, from Yamamura Sensei. Uh, maybe uh, times is up. 
uh, once again, thank you, Yamamura Sensei, for your nice talk and give us some uh, Doro information uh, and knowledge in your research study.